Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest back today, all the way from Israel, Dr. Mordechai Kadar, a 25-year um, expert coming from the Israeli Defense Forces Intelligence Division. He's a professor and lecturer at Bar Ilan University. He's also a very special friend of ATP. Welcome back, Moti. Thank you so much for giving me the pulpit. So let's jump right in. There's the Trump deal of the century, and then there's the Bibi Netanyahu deal relating to parts of the Trump deal, uh, in particular, annexation of certain Israeli territory in historical Judea and Samaria. So let's kick off the discussion with the Trump plan versus the Bibi plan. Well, the deal of the century was uh, publicized um, and uh, everybody is waiting to see what will happen with this. Um, the Palestinians already re rejected it, uh, no, overwhelmingly. And, um, and, and they don't want, want even to speak to the American crew. And so, you know, on one side, you can already say that this plan is actually ineffective because if the bride doesn't want to come to the wedding, so the groom by himself is not enough. But let me tell you something, Barry, about projects in the Middle East. Uh, there is a rule, uh, which I just made up, but it's, uh, it's true. In any project in the Middle East, the chance that the project will be implemented at the end of the day is one divided by the number of the participants to the power of two. Interesting rule, Monty. Now you have to explain it to our audience. If you have four states joining together in a project in the Middle East, and there's four Middle Eastern countries, the chance that this project will come to its successful end is one divided by four to the power of two, which is one to 16. Very tiny. Very low chance. Means that the larger the number of participants is, the lower is the chance of its real of the success of the and on the contrary if you have one country involved so it's one divided by one to the power of two which is one means the project will be implemented because only one country is involved and this is a rule which works 98 percent of the concurrences in the middle east so how does this rule apply, the Moti rule, to the deal of the century? And if you know, who drafted it? Look at the deal of the century, which was tailored by Jared Kushner, more or less. Uh, he involved in this, Israel, the PA, Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, uh, the Emirates, I think Kuwait as well, and of course the United States of America. We counted at least seven or eight parties. So you can imagine how small is the chance that this thing which will actually be implemented. And the explanation is very easy. When you need so many countries, the chance that one country will either back up or uh, will go away or will be angry because of something, or will recalculate its route or whatever, are very high because there are many countries which are involved and every one of them can actually put a veto on something and the whole thing actually is collapsing. And this is actually what happens here. Why do you think the deal of the century couldn't happen or are you now thinking it's not going to happen? The plan, uh, uh, in my humble view, uh, cannot be implemented mainly because it was tailored by the Americans. And Americans usually thinks like, think like Americans, not like Middle Easterners. And this is why 
not even one program, not even one plan, which was planned either in Europe or in America, worked in the Middle East. People in America and in, in Europe, as bright as they can be, they do not understand the culture of the Middle East. They do not know how to talk to people here. They do not know how to listen and how to understand what people tell them. So Moti, what is this Middle Eastern culture that Americans just don't get? Because in America, if somebody tells you something, you believe that what he says, that's what he means. Here in the Middle East, if, some, if somebody says something, it has three layers. The upper layer is what he says. The lower layer, which he conceals, is what he means, which could be something different. And the lowest level is actually what he tries to hide from you. People in the Middle East, since they are aware of this multi-layer kind of speaking, when they listen to you, they already think about what you try to tell them, what you try to hide, and what you try not to tell them. And this is always when you speak here in the Middle East. But Americans do not understand it. They take things always on face value. And they don't understand that here in the Middle East, it works different, even the way how people talk to you. So when Jared Kushner goes to Saudi Arabia and they tell him something, he believes that this is what they mean. He doesn't get the idea that here in the Middle East, they can tell one thing and they mean something else. And this is the problem. Interesting theory. Uh, thanks for sharing the Moti Kadar analysis of American versus Middle Eastern negotiation policy. And thank you for joining us today on ATP Report. A very special thank you to friend of American Truth Project, Dr. Mordechai Kadar. I want to advise all of our listeners today uh, just in America, by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet to our text message alert system, please take out your cell phone, text the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. That's all you have to do. Push send. You automatically get subscribed. You'll get our several times a week videos and articles directly on your cell phone. There's never a charge. We don't charge you for content. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.